Tanzu Application Catalog is an enterprise version of the Bitnami Catalog, designed for mission-critical production use cases. Tanzu Application Catalog is a cloud service that enables customers to build their own private catalog of custom-packaged open-source application components that are continuously maintained and verifiably tested for use in production environments. Now let's look at a demo of Tanzu Application Catalog by Brad Bach, a product manager at Tanzu by Broadcom. Yeah, so this is the user interface for uh, Tanzu Application Catalog. You can see uh, the name of the application, the base image it was built on, the release version, the status. Uh, you can see like in this case, something that's currently looks like it's building. Uh, the last time it was released, uh, and then you can click into any of these for the details. Um, you can filter these by the type. So if I just want to see things that I'm consuming as container images, I can do that. I can show things that I'm consuming as Helm charts. Another interesting thing here is that I can filter into different base operating system images. So you can see I've got things here that are packaged on Photon OS. I've got these two con uh, containers that are packaged on Red Hat UBI 8, one on Red Hat UBI 9. So you can see is, is you know, you might have the same app packaged on different Linux distros because we've, we've discovered as, uh, you know, large companies have different development teams with different requirements. Um, Uh, we've got our base images here. So these are all of the different ones that I've built software in this library on. I don't have any uh, custom ones, but this is where you can actually update or add your own uh, golden image if you've got one. We've got registries. So uh, we have a registry that I deployed, my own harbor. Um, if you don't have your own registry, if that's going to be a problem for you, we actually will host the registry for you. So you've got a hosted registry here. And you can see all of the deleted ones. This is the library. So this is actually available uh, publicly, like without being logged into the, the, the software. So I can see here all of the different uh, possible titles that I can pick. Uh, and if I click into them, I can see, for example, how they look on the different upstream distributions. And again, if you're looking at Photon OS, you see that the numbers are very low here. Uh, and each of these things, as I'll show you in just a moment, would come with a VEX uh, entry to explain uh, what's going on there with these identified, these things that were identified by the scanners. And finally, you have the ability to add uh, customization. So um, you can essentially, you know, take your, your app specific customizations and uh, apply those during the build process uh, for your individual applications. So let's jump into an individual app here uh, and see see what that looks like. I'm going to do concourse because I've already downloaded the, some of the documents for that. So you can see here, you know, I've got links to the docs. Uh, we've got multi-registry support. So if you have this in multiple registries, you can actually change the, you know, these commands here that you can copy and paste to 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 use the software itself uh we've got uh all of the different kinds of tags that you might want to use uh as you're as you're consuming this software um we've got rolling and immutable tags uh we give you these test results so um you know so you can see what actually happened uh, if you want to go back and check or verify or you want auditability uh you can see that this software, the latest release, passed all of these tests. Uh, and then down here, we've got all of these build time reports. Uh, so, you know, things like the source container that we use to build, uh, the trigger information. So somebody asked, you know, about, um, you know, how often do we, 
do we update the software? Uh, we actually give you uh, information also about why uh, this was updated. So in this case, this was updated because Concourse was updated. Uh, and we also tell you it fixes a CVE. So this, this helps you remediate this quickly because uh, you can automate the process of showing whether a known fix is available uh, for a particular uh, container in your, in your catalog. Uh, we've got this uh, antivirus scan report. Um, you know, we have asset spec, which is kind of a, a legacy thing before we started using S-bombs. Uh, we've got the security scan. So lots of information here. Um, and I want to kind of highlight two of them. One is the, the SPDX, the S-bomb. So you can download that. And we also have a visualization tool. Um, and I know this is very complex, but this is kind of the first step. I mentioned before that we have this software knowledge graph, uh, and we're actually making this do more and more things for you as a customer. Uh, and so it's going to become increasingly important. This visualization is kind of the first, uh, you know, the first implementation of this really awesome software knowledge graph that we have. Uh, and so, it's, you know, if you got if you if you want some more details on what that is, or if you're a customer, uh, please get in touch with us, and we'll we'll give you a demo of what this is capable of. But for now, this is the first implementation, and it and it shows you, you know, exactly what's in um, that application, and you can hover over that and get the open source license uh, and some other information about it. One of the nice things here is that going back to our library, if I do the same thing for a, say for a Helm chart, I'm also getting an SBOM. All of these things down here, these are these dependencies are the, you know, the containers that are deployed by this Helm chart. So I can get an SBOM, I can get that same information for all of them, but I can also see the bill of materials for the Helm chart itself. And this is going to be complicated, but um, you know, as I'll show you in a second, you've got this is this is basically built off the the JSON version of this, uh, and so you're able to see exactly what is in each of these um, you know these uh, artifacts that you're deploying in your environments. And you're able to build automation around that. Again, there's a list of all of the packages and libraries that are in this, uh, well, in the containers in the Helm chart. Um, one of the important things for our, just to quickly uh, cover is our, you know, our regulated customers, um, we, we show you here, like this is automatically populated with the information for your specific registry. A lot of our heavily regulated customers are using this software in air gap environments uh, where they're mirroring software from our registry to their own like DMZ or they're carrying it across an air gap and on, on a DVD or something like that. Uh, and so we've got this, uh, this uh, solution that we created called Chart Syncer uh, that actually enables you to move your charts to different places and, and update them. So you're always able to use kind of standard, uh, you know, Helm uh, deployment uh, uh, commands uh, for the re for the for the um, you know for the registry that you're pulling from in the environment that you're actually operating in. And I also just wanted to cover that the documentation for this, like I've got a Photon OS image. One of the reasons why de uh, developers love Bitnami is, you know, extensive documentation. And, you know, everything here is is exhaustively documented. So you've got all of your uh, parameters, your environment variables, all of the things that you need to successfully operate this software uh, are, are right here. Um, and, and we do this in a consistent way across all of the different applications that we publish. So another thing I wanted to just cover real quick 
uh, is, you know, what this, um, you know, we, we mentioned, or I mentioned before, we talked about S bombs and VEX metadata. So here's that S bomb for a concourse that I showed you the visual version of. Uh, and so you can see here, pretty long document, but it's meant to be kind of machine readable, something that you can build automation around. Uh, and, and as I mentioned, we're, we're going to come out with some really awesome capability to automate that for you uh, in the not too distant, not too distant future. Uh, and so I wanted to highlight here, this is the, the scan result. Uh, and this is a vulnerability that's present. It's triggered in that, in that, uh, in that concourse, right? So here's the CVE. And so now you might be asking yourself, Hey, is this, is this exploitable or not? Let me give you all the information about here in the scan about, you know, where to find information about it. But then if I go to the VEX document, that CVE is listed here, uh, and there's, uh, information about it, including the status. So this particular one is not known, not affected. Um, but it doesn't just tell you that it actually gives you a summary of why it's not affected. So you can go through this, you know, and you can check, uh, make sure that you're dotting your I's and crossing your T's when it comes to, uh, these vulnerabilities. But again, you can also build automation around this. So you can say, I don't want anything that's got a, you know, a CVE present, uh, or it's triggering the scanner, uh, with the status of, uh, known affected. Um, and so that, that helps you kind of reduce some of the, the work that happens and some of the difficulty around managing, uh, scans and false positives and things like that. So one more thing I want to do is just kind of show the process of adding a new application because that kind of gives you a sense of, of you know, what's available. Um, by the way, I also wanted to quickly point out that if you've got a tons of application catalog, uh, subscription, your developers might want to, they might not want to add a certain app to the paid, uh, catalog right away. Maybe they need to prototype something. Uh, and so they don't want to, you know, commit to, to doing that. We give you some additional information about the free open source Nanami software here. You can actually add that to your, uh, catalog and you still get the, the JSON, uh, or the, sorry, rather the S bomb. Uh, and some other other information about that software uh, and then you can go say you build some application that uses one of these bitnami images uh, because it's just a one-to-one -one replacement uh, when it's time to push that to production you can you know add the the enterprise version to your catalog uh, run through some tests to make sure that everything is working the same way uh, and then quickly kind of get that last mile to production so let's look at adding a new application. Uh, you can, this is, you can, this is where you choose. I just want the basic free open source Bitnami or the custom, uh, where I get to select things like if I want a Kubernetes app, which would be a Helm chart or a container, or I want a virtual machine. So let's try building our app on Photon 4, because I want that VEX metadata. I can choose my format here. So if I want a Helm chart and let's pick uh, Apache Spark. I choose the registry I have available to me. So I might have added several registries. In this case, I want to use the hosted one. I'll give it a name. And the last step here is adding it to the catalog, which I'll go ahead and do. Uh, and our system will get to adding that to your catalog and it'll be available uh, when it's when it's completed, 